A portion of this episode is brought to you by Google One. Hello, and welcome to your first day on the job here at Theorist HQ. We have all sorts of fun planned for you as you start working as our newest Insert job title here. Before we begin your exciting Theorist adventure, we are legally obligated to tell you that by continuing this tape, you are implicitly entering a legal agreement with Theorist is no longer liable for any injuries or, in rare cases, premature deaths befalling you or your family coming from any or all of the following. Paper cuts, running with scissors, vending machine accidents, Rates, computer monitors, electrocution, dark web activities, rampaging, Animatronics, the awkwardly placed knives. Walls. You're still there? Great. Welcome to your new job. Oh, and watch out for that thing that's behind the TV. <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, where we still think you're beautiful no matter how long your mangled corpse has been stuffed inside a robotic sheep. So if you've ever been on these channels for even a fraction of a second, chances are that you know that we're big fans of Five Nights at Freddy's. No, no, not that sort of fan. Put that thing away. You put it back in that heck closet where you came from. But in all seriousness, being a fan at this point is a bit of an understatement. Game Theory has gotten 45 episodes dedicated to the darn thing. Heck, in less than a year, Food Theory got an episode. It is practically a rite of passage for the theorist channels at this point. But what about me? Poor little underappreciated film theory, the middle child. Between the official movie's constant delays and other FNAFy films like the Banana Splits and Willy's Wonderland being meh at best, it seemed like there was really no chance for the requisite film theory on animatronic horror set in a nostalgic 80s era restaurant franchise. But then I found The Walton Files, a combination animation, live action, audio play, horror mystery history experience here on YouTube created by the Chilean animator Martin Walls. The events of the story, which is still ongoing and unfinished according to its creator, obviously draws heavily from its FNAF source material, but it uses those elements to tell a horrific tale in its own fresh way. A tale where the biggest horror isn't the immortal aubergine serial killer, but rather our own failings as human beings. But in order to get to that end result, you first need to piece it all together. True to form, on a first watch, all you're gonna take away are a bunch of disturbing images, but if you dare to look closer, the real plot is hidden by glitches, reversed audio, unlisted videos, and even the scariest place of them all, the YouTube comment section. <laughs> So what is the tale hidden inside the redacted Walton files? That, my friends, is what we aim to decode. At its core, we're very much in the FNAF tribute zone, at least at first. There is a Chuck E. Cheese-inspired family restaurant with animatronic robot mascots, a yet unspecified incident of 1974 that causes it to be condemned, and a legacy of horrific, possibly supernatural terrors spinning off from all of it. The restaurant in question this time, Bond's Burgers, which is said to have operated in 1974 in Brighton, Michigan. The hook? A troop of robotic mascot characters called the Showstoppers, which include our title character Bon Bunny, Boozoo the Ringmaster, Shaw the Sheep, Billy the Clown, and Banny the Other Rabbit because redundant. So far, the canon storyline is spread out across three main uploads made by a person named Anthony, titled Introductory Tape, Relocate Project, and Bunny Farm. We know this based on messages Anthony leaves in the description of each video. As he himself calls out, each upload is, in fact, a compilation of tapes, ranging from found footage to gameplay recordings to training tapes for new employees. And right off the bat, we're presented with this. <laughs> Backwards text. Backwards text that, when flipped, gives us this message. We finally start to remember that old day. They will be back for you soon. You finally start to remember that old day. They will look out for you soon. So already within minutes of this thing starting, we can tell that we're dealing with a repressed memory or amnesia plot. But who or what is coming for us? It's two minutes later when things get real serious. Bond invited Shah, Bozu, and... <sighs> that nightmare fuel there is Jack Walton, one of the co-founders of Bond's Burgers alongside his best friend Felix Kranken. We're told later in the series that they met in college in 1958 via their shared dream of building a restaurant themed around robotic mascots, which kind of feels like a weirdly specific thing to have a shared dream about with a random guy you met in college, but hey, you do you, Jack. Well, apparently doing you means putting his creepy pasta face in the scariest places imaginable. Jack is everywhere across all these tapes, on a movie box, on late night television, 
in your backpack. We see a missing poster appear on TV with Jack's face, but unfortunately, the video is too low quality to make out the details on the bottom on their own. Ugh, the sound design of this thing is just horrific. You would think that our clues would end there, but in a brilliant move on the part of Martin Walls, creator of the series, by turning on closed captions, we can see that Jack has been missing since June 11th, 1974, the same year that Bond's Burgers opened and then shortly thereafter closed. Coincidence? I think not. Our little Bond cartoon tries to get some light, but in a flash, we see a possessed Bond animatronic over a new character named Sophie, dressed in every security guard's favorite color, Purple. After the Sophie jump scare, we cut to live action found footage from October 10th, 1982, where we meet and immediately lose our final new character from this first video, Brian Stells, a facility caretaker for Bunny Smiles Incorporated, the parent company of Bond's Burgers. But he's not going to a restaurant, friends. Instead, we watch as he drives to a storage facility that's buried deep in the woods labeled K9. I've been driving for 20 minutes. Yeah, and I can't find a place. I made it to the location, I think. Chris called me this place had been working about 78. His job is to test out the animatronics. Hmm. Alone in the woods in an abandoned storage facility, turning on bloody animatronics. I think we all know how this one's gonna end. Brian is chased into the forest by Bond only to get himself crunched, leaving us with the parting words, quote, he thought I was her. Notice again the purple uniform. Suspicious. And with that uplifting message, the first upload of the series ends. But the mystery continues. You see, under the video is a pinned comment written by an account named Admin. The comment is, well, it looks like someone tried typing it with their feet. A string of random letters and numbers seemingly amounting to nothing. But you all know better because you all are theorists. You know that's gonna be a code, and indeed it is. It's a text string written in Base64, which, when translated using an online decoder, gives us, quote, the first pieces of the puzzle have been placed. The puzzle is far from a solution, however. Be wary of the hints that appear over time. One misdirection can throw off the course of this puzzle forever. Psi05. Noteworthy here is the name Psi05, which, when translated back in Base64 is, go figure, K9. Just like the animatronic storage facility. And now, things are really getting suspicious. Going to his channel reveals nothing but a ticking clock and a promise of more puzzle pieces for those who are patient. And speaking of patiently waiting for more clues, we'll be back with more Walton Files clues here in a minute. So, to recap, we have Bonds Burgers co-founder Jack Walton missing, but perhaps still alive due to a message of let me out of here on Bonds TV in that first video. We have someone trying to regain lost memories and someone or something else trying to help those memories come back. We also have two purple clad security caretakers, Dead Brian from 1982, who was mistaken for someone else, and Sophie. Could Brian have been mistaken for Sophie? Maybe, but to know for sure we have to continue to the second and longer video titled Walton Files 2 Relocate Project. And again, having closed captions on gives us immediate clues that we wouldn't have otherwise. Dates for the four tapes that we're about to watch, which surprisingly are all released around the same time. A training tape from July 2nd, 1978. A tech support tape from a few days later, July 9th, 1978. Found footage from three technicians dated July 12th to the 14th. And then finally a jump forward to a reprogramming tape from a month later, August, also 1978. Man, isn't it nice when franchises give you a clear and thought out timeline? Hmm? Isn't that a nice thing to have? <coughs> Scott Cawthon, I hope you're taking notes. <coughs> oh, sorry, my allergies just kicked in there. Oh, I'm allergic to un clear and muddy timelines. From these tapes, we start to fill in the gap of time from the previous upload. With all these coming from 1978, we learn what's happened since the closure of Bond's Burgers and Jack's disappearance four years prior, but also what led to Brian's death in 1982. We see that, in that time, Jack's partner Felix Kranken completely took over the company, literally cropping out his former best friend like you do with an ex-boyfriend on social media. The name Relocate Project is his initiative to, well, I'll let the text-to-speech bot tell you. The purpose of relocating them in a new restaurant that would be opened in a not-so-distant future. A pretty smart plan, right? A not-so-distant future of 1982, as we see on this high-fidelity drawing of the restaurant. So this tells us that Brian's death, also in 1982, was a direct result of Felix trying to rebrand and reopen the Bonds Burger franchise. And the film isn't subtle about how great of a guy Felix is. Let's give it up for Felix Kranken, a man with not only a giant brain, but also a giant heart. Hold on, what, what's that in the darkness? Brighten it. 
Hold! Oh! Sends shivers down my spine, but there's Jack again, almost as if he disagrees with the video calling Felix such a smart and amazing guy. The rest of the tapes in this batch seem to be telling us which souls possess which animatronics. We first see Banny the Lady Bunny, who seems to be possessed by a woman named Susan Woodings based on a missing poster that needs to be brightened in order to read. Banny seems to be trapped, as throughout her section we see imagery of caged rabbits and hear that The rabbit is starving. The rabbit is starving. The rabbit is starving. The rabbit is starving. Sounds like that bunny might be starving. I don't know, just a hunch. So, is Susan starving, or is this the animatronic itself starving and needing to feed on souls? It's unclear at this point, but it does seem to connect with a secret final line that happens after this episode's credits. Waiting until the very, very, very end of the video gives us this line. Shadow Man feeds me when lights go off. Weird, right? It would seem like we have another malevolent force at play in the story, or maybe the Shadow Man is a caretaker of sorts for these animatronics and the souls that are contained inside. Either way, it does seem like we see the Shadow Man on this same upload, in the third tape, the technical support VHS. Here, Shaw the Sheep gives us a tour of the facility, leaving rooms and leaving behind a dark figure, something that could easily be described as a Shadow Man. But that's not all the creep factor in this tape. In addition to your standard creepy posters on the wall, and disturbing imagery, we get this piece of audio. More reverse sounds. Playing it backwards, we get this. Rosemary would go to the restaurant every night hoping that his beloved husband would reappear after being missing for weeks, but no response until one day she heard a voice saying, I know where she is, Rosie, coming from the backstage. So it seems obvious that Shaw has the spirit of a woman named Rosemary inside. Based on the fact that we hear talk of her missing husband, Rosemary appears to be Jack wife also meeting with an untimely fate. But the real detail to call out here is the voice that leads her backstage before she gets stuffed using a shorter, more casual name like Rosie. She's actively being lured back there by someone who knows who she is. We hear later that Bond the Bunny is the one who will we'll fix you. You will be beautiful. So could it be that Bon was also the one luring her into the back? Or was it the Shadow Man? In any case, it's yet another confirmed victim of the restaurant chain, and yet another animatronic identity confirmed. Which leads us to the last tape of the bunch, in which three employees spend a night in the K-9 facility as they try to reprogram the animatronics. Ashley Parks, one of the three, wanders off at night to explore deeper into the facility. Through her found footage, we not only meet a new animal friend, a gray rabbit that appears to be more puppet than robot, but we also get up close and personal with Billy the Clown, which seems to be an older model complete with a cassette player in his stomach. And of course, this being a horror series, Ashley can't help herself. She plays the tape only to hear this. Jack, Susan, Charles, Rosemary, Sophie. A list of names, and not just any names, Jack, Susan, Rosemary, Sophie. One character we know went missing, two we know are in animatronics, and Sophie, whose role is still unclear. Plus, there's a new name this time, Charles. Could this be a list of souls possessing our five animatronics? Or, since we suspect that Rosemary and Jack were husband and wife, are they instead all related to each other? It remains to be seen at this point in the series. What doesn't remain a mystery, though, is the fate of Ashley, who, like so many before her, gets attacked by Bon and put into Billy. In a flash frame before the video ends, we're left with this chilling message and text across the screen of how their visit ended. They left the next day. They thought Ashley left early, but she was in the back door screaming as much as she can, but no one heard the screams. The following days, the caretakers would complain about an awful smell coming from the back doors. The company decided to shut down the facility until new advice. The relocate project was unsuccessful. Ashley is still there, but she's not screaming anymore. She saw something she wasn't supposed to see, and now she's beautiful. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. Again, just like Rosemary, we have this repeated theme of beauty, that fusing with the robots make you beautiful in some way. And with that, we're through everything from the first two canon Walton files, or are we? You see, there's one other massive secret in this video, a hidden code to find an unlisted video on Martin Walls' channel. And it's hinted at by everyone's favorite commenter, more puzzle pieces have been laid out for you. Others are more significant than others. Two pieces are crucial to slowly achieving the solution. Find the pieces, return them to me, and meet at the intersection. See you soon." End quote. And wouldn't you know it, but sure enough, there's a YouTube link broken in two pieces, hidden at both the front and back of the Relocate Project video. Putting them together gives you access to a secret video, Lucky You, where everything starts to come together. But that, my friends, is a story for another day when we continue dissecting the clues hidden in this 
this incredibly dense series. So for today, I'm gonna have to leave it at that. Three solved animatronics and a lot of loose threads to tie up. Like, who is Sophie? What happened to Jack? What is the Shadow Man? And seriously, a burger restaurant? Pizzeria, I get, but burgers? I don't know, now you're pushing my suspension to disbelief. Anyway, what you think? Should I keep going? Was that a fun one? Well, maybe fun's the wrong word. Maybe interesting? Compelling? The cool thing about this series is that it's able to get dark in a way that FNAF really can't, or at least hasn't yet. But this is more visceral, more raw, and to me, as a result, much more scary. So if you'd like to see more, leave the comment down below. Wah Wah Walton! I don't know why I asked you for that specifically. I thought it would be kind of funny to see a bunch of Wah Wah Waltons down there, but you know, you can just leave a comment of whatever. And heck, make sure you subscribe because at this point, I at least have to get through that secret video in part three, right? Right? Well, if you want to be notified of when that video drops, hitting the subscribe button is the only way to do it. And until then, remember, it's all just a theory. A film theory. And sweet dreams. I asked for more, but that was a mistake.